In shoemaking, some special operations are performed in order to prepare the upper pieces to be molded in a particular way. I am referring in particular to the so-called vamp crimping, which is um, carried out by a particular machine operating by molds. The goal is being able to shape, that is to mold by heating, the front part of the upper. In other words, this is the goal. So, depending on the style, depending on the heel height, this curvature and this curvature too must be given by molding the leather or any other material which is used uh, for the uh, upper cut. In this slide, as I put on in, in the title, we can see the final result after the machine crimping and before the trimming the excess. Basically, we can see a piece of cardboard, which is called the template for checking the curvature and uh, the style of the vamp, and uh, the corresponding uh, vamp in leather uh, already crimped. Um, basically, I can tell you that the main goal is having this type of shape, which is obviously corresponding to the cardboard template. Same thing, obviously, for this example. But um, uh, the matter is that we normally start from a large, depending on the design, but generally is a large flat piece of a vamp, so 2D piece of vamp, which must be molded by pressure, heating and timing in a particular machine that we can see in a very few minutes. Uh, this is basically a mechanical operation, it's not a really a natural operation, obviously, which is normally carried out on a piece of leather. And because of this mechanical treatment, uh, the piece of leather, because I'm focused on leather right now, tends after very few minutes to straighten back to the original condition if it's not well reinforced. That's why we have to use special types of reinforcing which are not the same type of reinforcing used to, uh, for example, straighten or reduce the elasticity or stretchability of any other type of upper. This type of material is called the jersey, and we can see it in a few slides. And uh, as you can probably well understand, this type of preparation is fundamental, very often is delicate, because not every type of upper material could receive this type of treatment. The shape, the curvature, depends on the heel height and basically depends also on the styling. In this picture, I try to put a couple of examples of uh, uh, the corresponding patterns used for uh, leather cut or in any case the vamp to be crimped and uh, the, there is a template which is this one um, uh, that is the, the one used for the uh, reinforcing uh, material to be cut out. As you can understand in these two examples there is a little gap in terms of dimensions. The, the one I put on top is the one to be cut out in Jersey uh, and the bottom is obviously the material for the upper. There is a little gap which is about uh, a centimeter. Um, why? Because generally the jersey must be uh, a little smaller because later in any case will be trimmed off so there is no need to use too much material in this type of rough pattern. Here they are. The material is called jersey. Again, suppliers like APC will um, supply rolls, so different height, different um, uh, types of design, uh, different thickness, different weight. Basically, uh, the uh, thicker uh, the upper material, the thicker is the reinforcing to be used to be able to keep in shape, obviously, this piece after this mechanical operation. One of the most important things to remind is that it's a jersey, so it's not uh, something like a, a drill or a twill. And so, in this case, uh, there is not this type of construction made by warp and weft, but on the opposite, there is a sort of construction made by crossing rings. And thanks to this type of construction, this material is soft, stretchable, and malleable enough to be stretched very strongly into the machine, to the molding machine, and to be able to obviously to preserve the shape after cooling down. Um, as we have seen in many other cases, one side of this material has, has been coated by glue, could be EVA or polyurethane, 
Um, and generally, these type of materials are never self-stickers. They must be heated because the glue has to penetrate into the piece to be molded. Uh, in this slide, we can see a couple of uh, examples clarifying my meaning. All right, first of all, we see a crimped vamp. This type of vamp hasn't uh, been curved uh, uh, strongly, but the material, so the leather, is very thick. It's more than two centimeters, and it is in particular used for uh, safety shoes. So in this case, the material is very strong, and so that's why we have to stick uh, a very strong jersey underneath. Um, unfortunately, um, the materials, I mean, the, 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 the flat uh, vamps to be creamed uh, at the very beginning maybe don't show some defective areas. This type of problems and issue comes out after crimping. In particular, I would like to focus on example number one and number two. Um, in this case, uh, the curvature is given but is not consistent. And uh, besides that, as you can understand, the piece is full of pleats and, and wrinkles. This means that uh, in the cutting department, they analyze the leather, they cut out a flat, a large piece, but after the crimping, obviously, the fibers, so the structure of the leather, is not, has not been strong enough to be able to be molded strongly as uh, required. In the example number two, again, we have an example of a vent which can, cannot be used for production because at the very beginning the leather was uh, rigid, so the, in the, during the tanning process they put some um, softening liquors or animal fats to be able to make it more malleable and softer, but unfortunately under the uh, pressure and under the heating used by the crimping machine that we can see in a very short time, the result is that the, the, the crimped piece is full of marks and, and the fats uh, ingredients uh, came up to the surface. So the final uh, goal is that uh, this type of, of uh, piece, even if it's been well crimped, cannot be used because this marking cannot be removed at all. Um, suppliers uh, give off uh, these materials uh, generally by rows, different height, as, as I was telling you, different weight, different, uh, uh, different thickness, a different way also to be attached, obviously, to the back part of the upper. But in any case, uh, we have to analyze the material before cutting, and we always find a stretch direction and a tightness direction. It's important to understand now the way to cut, because we have different solutions. Very often we uh, make many mistakes in um, cutting these materials, and so at the end uh, the process is not uh, very successful. Let me show you a couple of examples. Um, I put on this piece and on this diagram two examples of a vamp. Uh, we have example number one and the example number two. The example number two is following the stretch direction. So the stretch direction is uh, uh, given from heel to toe, while on the example number one, the tightness direction uh, follows the heel to toe. Uh, which one of these two is correct? Well, I can tell you that that's correct and this is wrong. Why? Because when crimping the vamp under the machine, so when the machine will give this type of curvature, the piece of leather needs to be elastic, so the stretch direction must be given according to this inclination and not that one. So this is completely wrong. That's okay. In case of doubt, sometimes we can also use uh, a sort of average. So it's possible also to cut in a bias the pieces in order to have a double inclination of a stretch direction. But this is okay only when we are in doubt. Okay, let me launch now some short video clips to better explain all the process which takes a lot of time. Um, so first of all, I will launch the first video. This is the analysis for reinforcing cut and this is the correct way to cut. That is, the operator is now testing the elasticity. This is the tightness. This is the stretchability, so that piece must be cut out according to this inclination. So the stretching is left according to this direction, which is correct. And this is obviously the way to show you that it's a little shorter and smaller. In the next video, 
I would like to show you the incorrect way. So the material is exactly the same, but as you can see, the operator is placing the piece vertically. So priority is given to the elasticity from heel to toe, which is completely wrong. Let me move on. What's going to happen afterwards? This is a test after cutting. So it is important to show you that this is a stretching. This is not stretchable, so it's wrong. We can attach it, we can crimp it, but what can happen is that maybe that material under the pressure of the machine will crack or in other cases will not uh, transform the upper material into a malleable you know, direction. Let me launch the other video which is explaining the way to attach it. Uh, a simple iron in this case is not advisable because we have to attach it with a lot of pressure. So again, depending on the type of material, we have different degrees, different pressure to be applied, and this is the, just a simple pressing machine. Now it is attached, and the next step is the softening operation, which is, which is advisable. It's a very simple operation. Um, as you can see, the operator will spray some softening liquor directly on that piece, we can, after a few minutes, move on to the crimping machine, but it is, a, for example, advisable, and it is a system which is very used to prepare the uppers already sprayed at night, put them into a plastic bag to preserve humidity, and then work that is crimp these uppers the day after, so after maybe eight or nine uh, hours of, uh, uh, you know, moisture. Okay, after the softening operation, it's most, the most important thing is to check how to place the piece to be molded on the plates, because the plate generally is one, I don't want to say universal, but very used for many hill heights. Basically, uh, the crimping machine it is supplied with a, um, a plate that is a molding plate for flat heel, for medium heel, and for high heel. So the operator now is testing, as you can see, by using the template, the position, let me launch again the video to show you better the template check. So the operator places the large piece to be crimped at that position, then it takes the template because the curvature depends also on the way we position uh, the pieces to be crimped. Once the position is found, we can move on to the crimping operation. The crimping operation works this way. It is very slow. And as you can see, the operator is just pressing the pedal step by step. And the operator is pulling the sides of the machine this way. So as you can see, the mold is pushing. Basically, this machine is made by uh, three plates. The two side plates are a little colder and then they pull, obviously, the piece to be crimped. Why, in this case, the black mold, which is this one given the curve, is uh, a little warmer, I can say hot, and will push the piece into uh, the opening, and after a few seconds, the timing depends on the material, obviously. I, on purpose, didn't cut out the video to show you the actual and the real sequence of the operations so after a few seconds as I was telling you the machine will open and the piece is perfectly shaped and molded the next step is obviously try to check the result so as you can see as I put in the title this is the template check with reinforcing as we can see it. let me launch the video clip to show you that first of all as the operator is showing, the material is thick enough, a good hand feeling. And so the operator places the, cr the crimped pattern on a table and by the template, okay, the check regards the curvature given. To be honest, in this piece there is a little gap, so the curve is not really perfect in the middle. So probably this piece would need more time or a different positioning on the crimping machine, but it's quite satisfactory. Okay, 
I would like to show you also the template check, but without reinforcing. So on purpose, I ask the operator to crimp a piece of leather, so a flat and large vamp. And this is the result. As you can see, <clears throat> the condition of that piece after the crimping is completely different. It's too soft, so not strong enough. The operator will check by the template, the same template, obviously, that piece but it is very visible the piece of leather it is too straight so let me say that after the crimping very probably the curvature was correct but after a few minutes which is the typical time you know between the crimping and the check the curve has changed so as i was telling you at the very beginning this piece is straightened tends to be straightened back to the original condition so as the operator will show, the toe and the top okay, are completely different than the final result. So this is completely wrong. So that's why we need, let me repeat again, to put the reinforcing on the you know, back side of the crimping band. Okay, let's move on to some other details. In this case, I would like to show you the problems given by a bad, or I, as I, I wrote here, a defective gluing. Let me launch the video. Can you see? So this comes generally because of a not a correct temperature or maybe because the pressure wasn't enough or because maybe the contents or the ingredients of the leather will repel the glue. So the crimping is done but is completely defective. Let me show you another example of a template check but the leather pattern must be revised. Don't forget that after the crimping, generally the crimped vamp is slightly wider. Uh, the goal is trying to leave not too much allowance because this material will be trimmed off. So it's a left out, is an extra cost. So the goal is try to find the way to give a nice curve. So not every leather obviously, again, could be well crimped. So we have to choose the correct material. And then after checking, as we can see here, we have to trim off the excess of material. But in this case, the crimping is perfect. The gluing of the material is, uh, is running well, but there's a little thing to revise on the pattern. Let me launch the video. So the operator is showing a very good result. Then the operator is, he is placing and checking the curvature, okay, which is good, satisfactory, but the problem is that there is too much material on the toe, too much material, too much allowance given to the top, it's a mechanical operation, it's difficult at the very beginning to be able to foresee or to predict what's going to happen to the pieces. And again, in terms of uh, pattern making, there is not enough allowance given to the back. So in this case, gluing is perfect, crimping is very good, but the rough pattern, that is the very large piece to be cut out, must be revised in order, obviously, to correspond to a perfect template.